So, Bona Nikona, welcome to the 11th episode of What's Your Flip. I'm your host, Chris Mercado. For this episode, I invited someone who I've known for quite a while. I first met him when I decided to seriously be in band. So, we were jamming in his uh, studio a lot way back then. And um, he's a well known musician. Uh, also a DJ and also a producer. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to my guest. He's the vocalist of a band called Halik Ni Gringo, and he's also known as DJ Joey Santos. Welcome to the show, Joey. Hi, Joey. It's been a very long time. Um, I, I don't remember the last time I saw you in person. <laughs> uh, uh- I uh, Probably like uh, in the mid 2010s. Yeah. The very most recent. Yeah. But maybe, maybe we go back a bit to that just so that for the benefit of the viewers, how I met Joey Santos. Um, uh, I used to be part of several bands before, and before Love One Another was, I mean, you guys were a production. Uh, Outfit and before, but you also had like a practice studio there, yeah. your place, right? So that's that's how I first met Joey, and then uh, I remember some of my bands also recorded at Love One Another, uh, and then there, I mean, I don't know, then we bump into each other like in gigs and other stuff over the years. So that's yeah. how the uh, Joey. Um, so so young Joey, so. To start off our conversation, um, maybe if, um, for the benefit of the viewers again, like how did you like start out uh, in music briefly, especially like making the transition between, of course we know about your band Halik de Gringo, but uh, you've also transitioned into doing DJ stuff. So tell us more about that. Yeah, I think the entire idea about like doing stuff in music for me, it, it was pretty fluid because in high school, I was already DJing. So yes. that was back in 1999. Oh, we're old now. Uh, back in 1999, so I was DJing. And at the same time, uh, I, I was in a band. So that's kind of when I realized that you know, both are music pursuits, but at the same time, they are very different in terms of how you experience performing music. Uh, being in a band is more performative yeah. uh, while DJing uh, it can be performative but at the same time it also has a lot to do with you know doing music research yeah. uh, picking the right song for the right moment so all of these things parang for me they're interesting because they're parang two sides of the same coin if you think about it but uh, if you're to take like the entire construct of music it's not just a coin it's like a, a polyhedron of some sort Pero yun, yeah, very interesting siya for me. And then, um, yeah, I, 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 I get that uh, quite often na parang, oh, um, may banda ka pala, uh, kala ko DJ, nag-DJ ka parate, ba't ka may banda? Or may banda ka, bakit ka nag-DJ ngayon? And parang, for me, it's, it's all one and the same. Uh, even like, you know, recording music or... Uh, Running a studio, they're all they're all the same thing. They're just different branches of uh, that single curiosity. Uh, which, at this point uh, in my life, parang I don't know. I'm like 36. Oh, I'm 37. Sorry, but <laughs> at 37 years old, this is the only thing that's really been constant. Like I've tried, you know, I've tried doing corporate. Uh, I was in the non-life insurance industry for a couple of years. Uh, I did that. Uh, full time, and while I was doing that, uh, I was also running the recording studio. That was when you guys recorded way back in 2009, I think 2008, 2009. Um, so there's that, and element. Parang e- even most recently, I was working for like a DJ website where I was creating content for it. I was basically showing pe- people how to DJ, how to make music using software, um, you know, that kind of thing. I was doing that for seven years up until recently. Because you know, because of COVID, uh, you know, you, you get laid off. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, basically, like, parang music is that thread that kind of 
runs through everything that I do, and I'm just realizing that now mm-hmm. that I'm talking to you. <laughs> so, yeah, that's kind of how I got into it. I stumbled into it, uh, like a lot of things that are important in life. Uh, you don't really plan for them, they just happen. Nice, nice. I mean, that's especially applicable now, given the situation we're all in. So, so like, yeah. what are you busy with these days? Uh, I mean, you have still have your bands, still have Gringo, then you have your DJ and stuff. So, like, what are you doing these days? Uh, so, well, what happened was, if you ask me this question, like, back in May mm. uh, 2020, I would say that, oh, I'm, I'm busy working uh, with my employer. But as, after June, I, I got laid off. That's June, Walana. So, since then, my main focus was to figure out what it was that I really wanted to do. Um, parang for like the last seven years, yeah, um, uh, doing like the DJ stuff was great. Doing the DJ website was great. A lot of fun. Got to travel, got to meet a lot of people, learned a lot of things. Pero I know that there were some facets of my interests that I didn't get to attend to just because I was always so busy doing those things. So. Yeah, and from June up until now, it's basically been this entire process of I don't want to say the word unpack, because parat it always gets used in podcasts. But I I just wanted to figure out uh, what it is uh, that I wanted to to do. And end of the day, yeah, it still is doing music stuff. So that's why now what I'm doing is uh, I'm producing artists. Uh, most recently, I worked with Bryson, they're like an electropop synthwave band from Manila. And uh, they came out with a couple of songs this year. I produced, I co-produced them, mixed them and everything. And then they're also coming up with a mixtape uh, later in the year. So there's that. Uh, I also am working with this solo classical guitarist. His name is Aaron Aguila. Nah, I, I just found out about him like on 98.7 DZFE, which is the classical station here uh, in Manila. So we're working together, also putting something out. And then uh, see Shelly, uh, she's this multi-instrumentalist slash artist slash writer slash everything. Um, she's one of those multi-hyphenate uh, millennials na sobrang galing. So she just put out, actually like right before this call, um, there was a TV ad for like a, um, a brand of panty, uh, of sanitary napkin. Uh, we used her song um, here today. Uh, the brand is Whisper or Always if you're uh, in the Euro- in Europe or the uh, Middle East. And yun, so we worked on that uh, for like a month and a half. Tapos kanina na launch siya. So yun, again, it's, it's, it's just back to like doing all of these music endeavors na parang... There's the corporate side of things, which is like the music production and doing music for ads, scoring media. And then there's the artistic side, I, I guess, if you want to call it that, which is like producing music for, for bands, which I really enjoy. And uh, so, yeah, uh, busy with that. And also just rebuilding the studio. Um, this is basically like a two-car garage dito sa, sa bahay ng parents ko, <laughs> which I, uh, I rent out half of it. So it's not free, unfortunately. But uh, yun, may ano naman. Um, or at least hindi mo siya yung renta. So I'm able to sort of build the space here where I can work on music uh, for an extended period of time without having to worry about paying overhead na pagkataas-taas, which, alam mo, it, the overhead back in uh, the studio before. Uh, for, for those listening, like I, I used to run a recording studio called Love One Another Sound Production. This was back in 2003 up until 2014. Ko siya in 2014. So basically, we left that space, which was uh, along C5. So, of it's a commercial space. It's a little bit more expensive. Your utilities are a bit higher. Your internet's more expensive. Ganyan. So it just didn't become like a practical uh, b- business anymore uh, just because you know things were going up. But at the same time, uh, prices for recording, prices for rehearsal, they weren't really catching up with the rest of the costs associated with running a business like that. So I decided to close it down. 
And yun, so nung nawala na ng trabaho, sabi sa akin ng boss ko, uh, my former uh, boss, sabi niya, parang, well, why don't you just do the studio again? And I'm like, yeah, pero like, who's gonna record during a pandemic? Like, you can't even get out of your house. But that this was back in May pa. So ngayon, yes, you can have like, attended sessions, pero at a minimum talaga. Mm-hmm. Like, I try not, as much as possible, not to have them in here. So we do all of our mixing sessions online or I mean, we'll do a test. I've had like two uh, ECLIA tests already, which is what they have in Medical City. They draw blood and then they run it uh, to test if you have like, you know, uh, the antibodies or something. And yun, so I, I do that regularly now uh, since the started, you know, twice. Uh, getting a third one probably towards the end of September. It's already September, ano ba ngayon? September 9? Uh, yeah, towards the end of the month, just to check. I think it's always important to check. So, yeah. Uh, just try to keep things going. Because I always, like, I have some friends also who lost their jobs. And the first thing that always comes to mind, uh, pag ganyan, pag ganyan, wala ang trabaho, or at least yung mga kalalo, they always ask, uh, I have to prepare my CV and I have to look for, like, the next thing that I want to do. And... I think right now, because the difficult thing about doing something like that is, it's not uh, the the job market isn't in favor of the employee. It's in favor of the employer, just because um, you know uh, companies are shedding staff um, or they're retrenching. Um, they're giving you early retirement, that kind of thing. So with so much talent uh, out of these companies. Employers suddenly have like you know their pick of uh, whoever they want. So pahir, pah, medyo pan siya ngayon. Uh, as much as I want to get like another job like the one I had previously, parang it's just not feasible at the moment. And you know, eh, parang all these months, parang I kind of realized that you know having like a stable uh, job was nice, but at the same time, parang I let those curiosities of mine sort of be left unattended and you know parang ko, now's, <laughs> i guess now's the best time to do it because it's not like i can you know go out and you know go job hunting uh, necessarily I, I mean i could pero you know the options are a little bit slimmer <laughs> relatively uh, compared to the world before the pandemic so yeah, yeah. no I, I mean i could perfectly la- relate with your situation just because i was uh, sort of in the other end of the spectrum um, before this whole entrepreneurial thing. I mean, I was like a corporate slave for 19 years and then I just was tired of it. So I just jumped. Um, yeah. Thankfully, like, you know, my family was very supportive of that. And it, it, it's, I mean, just to touch about a bit about entrepreneurship, like there's this rush that you feel that um, without that safety net of a stable job, because like I was like employed for 19 years and like whether you worked your ass off or did nothing one day, you always have that safety net that you're going to get something at the end of the month or on the 15th. So mm-hmm. it's like I've reached that point there and you know, that safety net wasn't really, I mean, it's a big deal being financially um, stable, but on the other end, in terms of like being creative and working for your passion, that sorts of loses its value. So, um, I mean, I, I think a lot of people can relate to this. Like, you know, it's really the hustle that you do on a constant basis that keeps you going. I mean, it's not as financially rewarding as having a stable job, but um, it really keeps you going. Like, you know. Uh, day in, day out, you have to constantly think about you know, what should I do now so that I can still put food on the table and even sustain my own passion. So, so there, I can perfectly relate where where you are right now. So, now yeah. moving on to like from what you're doing now, what sort of things that are you, that you're changing a bit so that you're sort of future proofing yourself or even your craft. Um, well, what are some of those things you're doing at this point? Um, yeah, so I always try to think about what's coming next. And even leading into 2020, like I had 
a lot of plans for this year and obviously wala sa kanilang natupad and i try to do that every year i try to have plans for uh, for the year and then at the end of the year i do a bit of a review parang oh, so how how are those goals coming along and then uh, it's not because i don't stick to the goals it's just because life happens and alam mo yun, i i know that you can go on youtube and just look for all these motivational things na parang, oh, what am I gonna do with my life at 25? What am I gonna do with my life at 36? Or something like that. And they always uh, have all, parang uh, these these rose-colored glasses na parang, oh, if you like write down your goals, it's, it's gonna happen or something like that. Or, you know, if you plan for like the next 10 years, uh, they're gonna happen. Maraming advice na ganun. And that's okay. Because it kind of gives, it kind of opens your mind to the possibility of stuff happening, stuff that you actually like. But I think, and it's not even a realistic expectation. It's more like when those things don't happen, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. Because, uh, you know, hai, parang there is a randomness to life. And it's not just because you know, you don't plan well, you can be like the best, you can plan as much as you want down to like, you know, dot all your I's and cross all your T's. Hindi mangyayari 100% nun. So, to your question of how I future-proof myself, parang, I don't think there is any way to do that. Uh, you do it every single day. Uh, what I want, what what I'm doing now is instead of, you know, um, thinking about like the latest technology and recording music or producing music, something like that. What I'm doing is I try to look back and see all the gaps in my knowledge about uh, music production or in this case, um, you know, lear- learning music itself, uh, you know, from, from like a, a meta level. Na parang sige. What is that one thing I can learn about um, music making that will improve all aspects of uh, the music stuff that I do, from DJing, uh, being in a band, or producing artists? And an example of that would be, you know, learning music theory. So that's what I'm doing a lot of right now, uh, just filling in my gaps there. Tapos, uh, learning instruments as well. I think, seguro for you know, for like the past decade, I probably like didn't play <laughs> I, did, I, I didn't play like a lot of guitar i didn't play like instruments or stuff but i didn't have time so now i have time um you know i've been taking uh i've been trying to learn the bass uh for like the last three weeks <laughs> almost a month uh learning to play the bass uh learning to play the drums uh relearning guitar uh learning how to orchestrate uh, which is something that happened out, out of necessity because my mom projects that came along na kailangan na orchestral scoring so I had to learn uh, how to teach myself that so yun i think future proofing yourself uh, as much as i hate that term because there is absolutely no way to future proof yourself uh, the one thing that you can do is always to know more about whatever it is that you're doing uh, whether that's music or uh, your painting your sculptor or even if you're like in, in a financial institution uh, entrepreneurship uh, there's always something new that you can learn. Uh, and if it's not something new, there's always something old that you can revisit and try to dig out more uh, information and knowledge that would be pertinent to whatever your situation in life is. And that's why you see like so many of these bloggers and YouTubers and podcasters talking about stoicism, talking about, uh, you know, um, ethics talking about uh you know, all these greek uh, and roman leaders because in, in, the, in the most classical sense of knowledge they had they had something that that was very fundamental now until today if you read about it it still applies so yun. um i i think uh reading up is like a really good strategy and <laughs> studying is a really good strategy so yun. Nice, nice. No, I, I actually saw your posts recently that yeah, you, you've been taking up 
uh, playing the bass, which I've been doing for quite a while, but you know, I don't consider myself really as like a pro or anything like that. But oh, you're really good. It's really, it's really fascinating. So and it's good that I, I think that's what a lot of us are doing at this point: um, uh, learning new skills, um, mm. upgrading in terms of what our existing knowledge is. Yeah. And, and also revisiting some of the things in the past that we might have taken for granted. And now that we have the time to do it, we're starting to pick up uh, where we left off the last uh, time we, like, for example, picked up on the drums or, or the guitar or stuff like mm. that. So anyway, related to that, moving on to the last question, like um, given we were in like what, I think sixth or seventh month of the pandemic, what are some of the lessons you've learned during this time? and? How are you using those lessons to um, improve yourself? Yeah, I just, I think the, num the number one, there are a lot, but I think the one that really stuck with me is that no matter how secure you think things are, they really aren't. Um, and I'm not just talking about like job security. I'm not talking about security in a relationship or security with, uh, you know, your belongings or uh, where you live or something like that. It's it's in totality. Na parang, I mean, you can be, of course, like it's it's nice to sleep at night knowing that you know you're in a loving relationship or like you have a nice job or that uh, you've got money coming in at the end of the month. Pero what this entire uh, situa situation with COVID and everything happening, it it just kind of it instilled in me like this this notion that security is something that you can strive for, but it doesn't necessarily stay the way it is. Uh, no matter how much you you try to, you know, even. <laughs> Even just for like my situation, no matter how try how hard you try to work, no matter how many hours you put into whatever it is that you're doing, something's gonna happen, and then you know uh, you, you get you exit the company, or you know you you give a hundred and ten percent to your, your relationship, your girlfriend more, your boyfriend more, and then suddenly, wala mahanap siya ng iba, or tipong ano man, you just grow apart, stuff like that happens so you know you're gonna try to control all of these things but in reality you can't because you know these are other people or these are situations situations happening in the world that are being um i i guess they're also being undertaken by other people in the world so you can't wala naman talagang control it the only thing that you can control is your reaction to whatever is actually happening so it's not like it's not like a stoic philosophy. It's more like just being kind of hands off uh, with the stuff that, I mean, uh, you, you can't always, I guess you can't always hold on to something uh, and expect it to behave that way or expect things to stay as the status quo because well, things always change and that's just the reality of life. So yeah, that's like I think that's like the biggest lesson uh, for me. Um, you know, uh, we're not in a meritocracy. That's it. Nice, nice. No, no, no. I I love what you said. Just because I mean, especially within the context of COVID, I mean, you can't. I think we've gone from the point of you know planning so much ahead into the future just because we don't even know what tomorrow is gonna bring to us. So. It's really about, at least for me, it's really about um, doing what you can, making the most of what's uh, in front of you today, and yeah. let's just see what happens tomorrow. I mean, because tomorrow is going to be your next today, and that's all you, you hold on to at this point. Yeah, that, that's right. Yeah. So anyway, Joey, as as we end um, this particular episode, uh, is there anything you want to? Share with the viewers in terms of like to promote like uh, if you have some uh, activities going on uh, like for example your production work if there are people who would like to uh, work with you stuff like that yeah just find me on 
uh, Facebook, facebook.com slash DJ Joey Santos. Uh, on Instagram and Twitter at DJ Joey Santos. LinkedIn at DJ Joey Santos. Uh, I have a website, DJ Joey Santos. Dot com. It's just there for SEO. Para mas madali maalala. Uh, for production work, yeah, I, you know, uh, I have a studio, LOA.ph. You can look for that. And then, yeah, I'm also like, a, if if you want, if you want to hear like ambient stuff, uh, I put out a lot of that on the regular. It's on Spotify, and just look for me there. Tapos, yun maglalabas ako like three weeks from now, I think. I'm looking at my calendar. Three weeks from now. So yeah, the there's actually a lot. Alam mo, parang I always feel like I, I was telling my girlfriend this that just like this past week na parang I know that uh, a lot of us are unemployed. Pero why are all of us still so busy? And then that's what I realized na just because you know, um, wala kang wala kang employment structure, and I don't find it And I'm kind of it's I like I like that. Uh, I like it was a it was a change in mindset for me uh, realizing that because parang I always felt that just you know having that kind of formal structure to your day uh, that's what productivity is but it's not it's actually you know you doing the things that as much as possible you want to do and also getting the result that you want to get na sometimes champagne di mo mako yung gusto mo pero Nag-enjoy ka. Alam mo yun, um, I, I think that's like the most important thing, especially right now. Uh, just, if you hate what you're doing, ask yourself if it's worth doing it still. So, yun. Nice, nice. So, thanks a lot, Joey. This, uh, you're welcome. Thank you, too. It's been a long time coming. Uh, thanks for coming over on the show. And I wish you well. Keep safe and healthy. And definitely, we'll still see each other again. Once it's all over, so I yeah, I, I feel like the end of 2021, medyo magkakaroon ng sense of normal si I mean, you still have masks and stuff, pero hopefully, meron ng bars ulit and clubs, or at least like a safe way to drink yeah. with a mask on, so you don't have to remove it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll, yun, I have hope. I have hope. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I think that's what we can all hold, which is hope. Uh, Yeah, yeah. It, uh, things things will get better. You, you, that's what I always say. So. Yeah. And they will, I'm sure. All right, thanks, Joey. Okay, thanks, Chris. Yep. So that's our show for this week. Thank you for joining us again. So we have our show every Wednesday, 12 noon. And I hope to see you guys again next week. So until then, keep safe, stay healthy, practice physical distancing, and just keep on flipping. Bye.